all right so let's talk about transaction in this video okay so sometimes you want to make changes in our database in atomic way that is all changes should be saved together and if one of them fails then none of them should be changed that means it should roll back to its original position all right so giving order with an item for example if i say if i want to order something then that order will contain some items so what if an order has been placed and there is no item inside it so that is the scenario where the transaction uses i'll tell you with the codes so let's say let's create an order first so i'll write order equals to uh, order and then uh, this will have customer id also so i'll say order dot uh, customer id okay and i'll give it a value as one okay so this is parent class okay so one thing you should remember that parent class should be created before the child class so first order order should be there and then order item okay so now what i'll do i'll create the item so i'll say uh, item item equals to order item okay this one and after this item i'll write item dot order equals to order all right now then it will have product id so i'll write item under dot product product id id equals to v1 then item dot quantity i'll specify so i'll write item dot quantity let's say you want to give the quantity 10 okay and then you save it item dot save all right so this is the child class which we have created so item order item item dot order equals to order then we have product id then quantity and then we have saved it now let's say if, if you uh, while saving this order something wrong happens so what will happen over here we'll have an inconsistency in our database basically we will have an order wherein the order will not have any item inside it so it's a funny situation over here so to deal with that we use transaction so transaction will ensure either both of them happens or none of them happens okay so for that purpose what i have to do i have to first import the transaction model so i'll write from django dot db import transaction okay now after importing that this particular transaction model is having a function called atomic function okay so i can use it as a decorator over here so either i can use it over here i can write it as at the rate transaction dot atomic okay and this will ensure the entire code view functions inside this particular transaction dot atomic okay so this is how we ensure the implementation of transaction but now sometimes you don't need you need some control over some uh, some of the uh, things so you want to keep something inside transaction dot atomic and something you don't want to keep it inside it so for that purpose we use context manager okay so let's say i'll just delete this so you want to keep some code some of the code inside this okay so you will keep it inside atomic function and some some of them you want to keep outside the function so you will write simply over here what i'll do i'll write after this what i'll do let's say i over here i, I can write it as so i'll write with transaction okay dot atomic and over here this is a function okay with transaction dot atomic you want to keep all all these things over here like this and these are the codes which you don't want to keep it inside the transaction atomic okay so this is how you insert the things inside transaction okay now if you go back to your uh, something wrong i guess some somewhere wrong has happened
okay this will be okay these things will be indented inside this okay all right now save this okay now this is how you do this and here one more thing you need to add over here is item dot unit price okay okay and then i'll set it to 10 all right okay now if i go to my data grip and over here if, if you open a query console new query console and this uh, add done because we had thousand products and this add done while practicing so this has been created so if i create now it will be hundred and thousand and six so i'll write select everything that is star from store order and order by okay id in descending order all right so if i run this console i should be having one i'll just save this i'll save okay and go back to my browser refresh all right now over here if i run this in data grip it will show me 1006 okay so here we have successfully added the item along with cart number okay so we have cart and we have cart item also so this is all about the transaction guys now the last class of this particular section is executing raw sql queries okay so sometimes uh, implementing certain queries using django object relational mapper can get over overly complex okay so in that case you directly you bypass the things and you directly execute the command through django and how we will do it that i'll show you okay so come to your vs code i'll delete this all right so let's say we have a function over here and i write it as a query set okay query set equals to i'll write product okay dot objects dot uh, you have raw this is this is the uh, syntax of writing a raw sql so i'll write here i can write the sql queries over here theek hai so i can write uh, select everything okay from uh, i'll write store product every manager has this raw method and for executing the raw sql query and this is how the django is going to execute this query so if you write over here that you store it inside result okay i'll just wrap it inside curly braces and this will give you list of query set all right okay i save this now go back to your browser refresh okay okay select everything from okay this thing you have to write it inside quote okay save it go back to your browser refresh go to your sql query here you can see that select everything from store product so this is how you use the sql query raw sql queries okay so this was all about executing the raw sql using raw functions okay so next class onwards we will start with the admin side guys and uh, we'll see about admin interface how we can uh, how we can map the admin sections that i'll talk in the next class